Chapter 15, Lights Out. When I finally landed a job in educational leadership, I did so outside of the district I spent my first 15 years in, the district I intended on being in for the duration of my professional career. I left that school 15 years after my baggy pantsuit first stepped foot in central office for an interview that set in motion the path I was meant to follow. When I finished the final interview at my new school in the spring of 2018, I cried on my drive home. I cried because I felt I'd gotten the job. I cried because I never intended to leave my first district. I cried because I had to walk away from the place I desperately thought was home. In hopes of placating my emotions one last time, I met with my superintendent to ask the one question I had yet to find the courage to ask. As suspected, I had been offered the assistant principal job in the other district, but I couldn't bring myself to accept it. I had to know one thing, one final hope my emotions wouldn't let go of. Is there a future for me here? I asked the superintendent, a key member of my former friend group. He sat across the desk from me, windows behind him. He'd always been gracious in giving me his time. I never doubted his respect for the work I had done as a member of the teaching staff. I had received awards in the community and at school committee meetings. But how deep was that respect? How much did he see me or want me as part of the district's future? Not one that I can see in the near future, he replied. If a position were to open up, you can always apply and maybe come back, he couched it. My heart sank. It was at that moment I knew I had to find the strength to leave everything I had known for a decade and a half. The place where I established myself as a professional, the place I had met my husband, the place where I had two kids, both of whom went to daycare and preschool in the building. Just as I had on the drive home from my final interview just a few days before, I cried as I walked back to my office. Later that night, I called who would become my new principal and said, Let's do this. It's been almost five years since I walked out of my first district in June of 2018. I spent the first three and a quarter of those years never shaking the pain of the way it ended, never feeling settled or being able to find enough pride in how far I had come since. Emotionally, it was difficult to connect to my new school and new colleagues. I always felt like an outsider, like I'd been borrowed for a while. I would often fantasize about a return, knowing full well one was unlikely to ever occur. While I had been back to the building twice to attend events for my daughter, she was still in preschool there, I never felt like the story was over or the last chapter had been written. My co-parents' continued employment in the school was a painful reminder of everything that used to feel routine, a part of me. There were colleagues and friends he would discuss, events he'd summarize, and things he'd complain about that stung just as much as it did to leave. Having passed a tax override, the city started building a brand new high school right next to the old one the year I left. I'd see pictures of the construction, read articles about the progress, and hear my co-parent talk about the new system alignments taking shape for the move. He'd encourage me to take a drive by to see how big the new building was where it was situated, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to drive by the new building while the old one continued to sit there and taunt me. While I was not able to emotionally understand the depth of the juxtaposition, I simply knew it would be too difficult to do. That is, until one day in the spring of 2022, when my co-parent sent me a video of the first day of demolition of the old building. I watched the video and I started to tear up. I was hit with the enormity of my emotions associated with home being gone forever. The last chapter had yet to be written, and there was so little time left to do so.